Well, we're excited to uh, to get back out there and compete um, for 40 minutes again tomorrow night uh, against Siena. You know, a few things that I'm really looking for, um, looking from from our team. Number one, you know, I want to see if we can take care of the ball again, um, a lot like we did in Game One against Jacksonville, which I think is a really good sign for us. I thought that really plagued our team last year. But to have only 11 turnovers in game one was a really good sign. I want to see that again tomorrow night. And number two, um, I want to clean up our shot selection. You know, we, we, we talked about that heavily um, after the game. Uh, we showed a lot of film. Um, having an understanding of who we are. You know, we're an inside-outside team. we got to be able to post it, drive it. And then if that produces an open three, then no problem. You know, we want to step in and take those shots. But we got to be smart with our shot selection. And then the third thing is I want to be able to defend for 40 minutes um, you know, I thought against Jacksonville for 25 minutes, we were pretty dang good and, and give Jacksonville credit the last 15 minutes. But at the same time, didn't think that we executed our defensive system um, like we did in the first 25 minutes of the game. And I want to see us put 40 minutes together um, tomorrow night against Siena. You know, Siena will pose some problems. I think they're really talented offensively. Um, obviously, they scored a lot of points against American in their first game. Um, they got a returning first team, I think, freshman All-American in Javon Pickett. Uh, Donald Carey sat out for them last year, um, was a first-team All-NEC freshman the year before. Um, so they're going to be experienced guards. Um, they can both really, really score. Uh, they got the big kid Elijah Burns, who, who's a grad transfer from Notre Dame, who's big and physical. And you know, So they're going to be an experienced team. They're not going to be scared uh, to come in here and, and play. Um, you know, I anticipate we're going to get their best shot. And uh, we're going to have to put together, like I said, 40 total minutes. Travis, when you talk about shot selection um, with in regards to three-point shooting, do you think that the um, international distance that you're playing at now, like you did in Spain, does that have an effect on the way you guys have been shooting threes? Um, I, I, would, I think we're way better than what we're shooting. I, I do. I think we've been in a little bit of funk. Uh, in practice, we've been, be we've been fine. Um, you know, but I do think, obviously, the deeper the shots you take, the lower the percentages, right? And, and I think you're probably seeing that all across college basketball right now. It's affecting a lot of people. And, and uh, we have to be able to make that adjustment. And it's like I told our guys, if the ball has been reversed or the ball has been inside, outside, or a guy just hit a three, um, then, yeah, it probably makes sense for you to take another three, you know, like right away. Um, like Paul made one early on in the game. And, you know, he took another quick one in transition, which I got no problem. And that's, that's, that's in the flow of the game. So just trying to get our guys to understand flow, you know, time, uh, when to take those threes. Have you noticed any issues with, um, like John Cowell said, about in the corner there where the line now pushes guys a little closer to the, the end line? And I think Najee did have one turnover from stepping mm -hmm. too close. Have you noticed that in practice, or um, is that not been a problem? Not, not as much for us. You know, we were able to experience it, obviously, over in Spain and, and, and tried to make that adjustment. We, we stepped out of bounds, I think, eight or nine times while we were in Spain. So we kind of knew that heading in. We had a little bit of advantage in that area. Uh, that's really what we focused on all fall was just kind of shooting and, and shortening up our footwork in, the, in those corners. Um, but the corner threes are important. That's the closest three, right? And uh, so you got to be able to have really good feet in, 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 that, in that area of the floor. When you initially watch film on Siena, uh, you're looking for, for what they like to do, like uh, what they're, they're really good at, and then are you immediately trying to – hey, we need to take that away. Is that like part of the thought process when you're scouting an opponent? Yeah, I, th I think you look at what their strengths are and, and what they do really well. Um, and then you try to game plan against those things, you know. Um, obviously, they got a special player in Pickett. He's really, really, really good. Um, and you got a game plan for a guy like that, you know, with, with his scoring capabilities. And then on the defensive end, you know, you're always thinking, like, how do they, you know, are they more of a man team, the more of a zone team? You know, how do we attack those guys? How can we exploit them on that end? So it kind of goes on both sides of the ball. And, and for Siena, we only get one, one game tape, right? You know, so it's, you know, small sample size. It's all 40 minutes uh, of Siena. And we watched him last year's film as well, but new coach. And obviously he was on staff there, but they're running things a little bit differently than they did in the, with the previous coach. After a game, how how quickly do you try to get your hands on a box score? And then I'm curious, when you look at it, like do your eyes go to the same spot every time? Like do you look at the same things in succession when you kind of break down a box score after a game? Yeah, you know, I, I get them every time out as well throughout the game. Uh, and I think the first thing, 
you know, the first thing I always want to know, and it's coming from our staff, did we win that war or not? And then where are we at kills wise? You know, we always want to try to remind our guys of those two things. But then I look at the stat sheet and I'll say, hey, where, where are we at turnover wise? I want to know exactly how many turnovers did we have that specific war? Um, then it'll probably be rebounding. I'm going to look right to that line, like our, where, where are we at as far as the rebounding margin and then free throws. You know, we got to be able to get to the line, we got to be able to make our free throws. Um, we were slightly better. Um, last game than we were the game before. It's hard to be any worse than 28% that we shot against UND. Um, but again, we, we got to continue to get to the free throw line. Travis, going back to the outside shooting, in your mind, how much does this team need to be good beyond the perimeter to be a great team this year? Um, you know, I, I think, you know, the better you shoot the ball, Jeremy, the, the, the bigger the runs you have, the more spurtability you have a little bit as far as, as, as your runs go. But Again, I think for our team to be really good, we got to be really good at what we do. And that's on the defensive end. It's rebounding. We have to take care of the ball. And then we got to get to the free throw line. And to me, the more alarming stat for us is the free throw shooting. And again, we got to be a lot better in that area because that's where we're going to live. You obviously shoot a lot in practice. I mean, why wouldn't you? The guys are getting up a ton of shots. Um, even when there are struggles, what is your philosophy on outside shooting and just trying to kind of, I don't know, get minds right for a game time scenario? Yeah, I think a lot of it's mental, you know, like, again, having the confidence to knock it in, right? And But just trying to get those guys to understand, like, you know, number one, I have confidence in all of our guys if we're taking the right shots, you know? And, and it's like I told our guys, and I said, hey, if if you have a million dollars and we're not allowed to bet on it, all right, if I, if I had a million dollars, I'm probably not betting on the New York Jets to win the Super Bowl. I don't like mods, right? And, and so I said the same thing. Well, all of a sudden, if you're not a great shooter – then why are we just coming up the floor just jacking up a three? Yeah, probably not playing to our strengths. You know, like it's all about the game of odds. Like we have to be able to get the ball inside, whether that's drives, post ups, and then play out of it. And then I think you'll see our offensive rebounding will get better as well because it's a shot that you're expecting your teammate to take, and which I think is so important. Um, and I, I think our percentages are going to go up because I think we're a better shooting team than we've shot for sure. But I think it'll go drastically up if we take the right shots. In the last hour, uh, the announcement came that Deontay Miles is red shirting. What do you hope to get from him during this year? Um, and is it predominantly physical development or is it, is it other things like learning the system as well? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I, I talked to Deontay and his family and, and we came to an agreement that it was the right thing to do for him to red shirt. And, and Shane, he, he made it he made it really tough, and I and, and I because I know he can help our team this year. I really believe that um, he is as talented as any players we've had since I've been here at Xavier, and I don't even think it's even close. Now he just turned 18 years old. Um, he should, if you think about it, be a senior in high school. He's got to obviously get stronger. Um, you know, I want him to continue to learn our system. Uh, he's got to continue to work on his right hand. You know, he's left hand dominant. Uh, but man, he's, he is talented. He is super talented. And we have all the resources in the world, and he knows this, between Matt Jennings, uh, between how our guys eat, um, Jonas Hayes, who I think is the best post coach in the country. Um, he's got all the resources to get better. And, and he's a great kid. He's going to work really hard. And you look at, and, and, I, and I told him, I said, hey, you know, not that it, this always works out for everybody this way, but the last couple guys we've redshirted, it's worked out pretty dang well for. You know, Edmund Sumner, Derek Brown. Um, those guys took advantages of, of those years, got stronger, uh, learned our system, got better as players, and then they were able to really, really impact our team They're during their redshirt freshman years. And, and, uh, and I believe Deontay has that level of talent. Is there anything update-wise on Daniel Ramsey in terms of his concussion? Is he coming back to practice soon? Do you know? I hope so. You know, again, you guys got to be patient with the stuff. And, it, you know, and again, it's, it's serious, obviously. It's his brain. Um, you know, he, he got dinged in the head pretty good by the ball, the pass. Um, so hopefully he'll be back sooner rather than later. But not yet. Not He has not been cleared yet. And what about Kiki? Is he still in the boot? Do you have any idea when he might be able to start practicing again? Well, Kiki, let him tell you, he wants he'll, he's going to play tomorrow, <laughs> you know. Um, he thinks he's a doctor. So you ever seen those commercials, the Holiday Inn Express? He stayed at the Holiday Inn Express <laughs> last night. Um, he, uh, you know, he wants to play, and it's driving him crazy. And it drives me crazy, too, seeing him over there. Um, but, you know, again, we're going to be patient. We're going to be cautious. We want to bring him back at the right time. Uh, we don't want his foot injury to linger. 
you know, throughout the year, then all of a sudden we bring him back a little bit too early and too premature, and then all of a sudden he's out for another month or two months. Maybe it's more serious. And and uh, we want to do right by him, obviously, in his health first. But I, I would anticipate it's going to be a couple more weeks here before we see him. Um, to piggyback on the Deontay, when you, when you break that news to him and you tell him, hey, and it sounds like it was more of a conversation, but – what was his kind of reaction? How did he, how did he take that news? Was he mm-hmm. more upbeat? or? Yeah, I, I made it his choice. And I told him I will support whatever Deontay Miles wants to do. And, um, you know, wasn't, I, I didn't force it. Um, I told him I could see it probably going either way, in my opinion. I said I would love to have him play, being out there on the floor blocking some shots and dunking the ball. But I also know what I think is best for, for Deontay. And, uh, and I think we're going to look back on this and say, man, we, we 100% made the right decision. And I think he was – and I think it had been in his mind a little bit, Adam, um, just as far as, you know, there's those days in practice where, you know, he's going against Tyreek Jones, who's 23 years old. You know, he's a grown man. And he, he's really strong, obviously, Tyreek is. And, you know, Deontay just turned 18, man, like – you know, so he, you know, I think he would go. He's had a couple days though where he's gotten the better of Tyreek, and so I think he was kind of torn, you know, a little bit, you know, both ways. And I told him, I said, "Hey, listen, think about it, talk it over with your mom and dad. I'll support whichever way you wanted, whichever direction you want to go, and uh, and then we'll move from there." But I think he's excited. You know, I think there's going to be days, obviously, Adam, where he wants to be out there on the floor. I'm sure game nights are going to be hard for him. You know, like when we're playing at Villanova, or wherever it's wherever and tomorrow. Against Siena, he's going to be, man. I, you know, guys want to play, they want to compete. But he's going to be able to do everything that we, our guys do as far as he'll get extra lifts in, he'll get extra workouts in with Hayes. He'll be able to practice. He'll be able to travel with us as well. Um, so he'll get to experience every road game. He'll be able to go to MSG for the Big East tournament, the whole nine yards. Um, so that'll really prepare him to have a really, really good, impactful freshman year next year. But if, if you run into a critical personnel situation, you could take the red shirt off, right? We could. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's why he's, he's able to travel, Andy, uh, per NCAA rules, because I could throw him in there at any point. Um, and uh, hopefully that doesn't uh, come to fruition. Hopefully we stay healthy. Um, but, uh, you know, I, only wanted, I didn't want to look back and regret playing Deontay. You know, I'm just throwing out a number, but 40-some minutes as a freshman and wasting his freshman year. I only want to play him if I know he's going to play a lot, a lot. And, uh, and that's not to downplay his ability. I think it's there. It just needs to continue to develop. Uh, Pickett is sort of a, a hybrid player. How do you cla- Is he a guard? Is he a forward? What do they're, you- they're playing him at the point a lot. You know, so the, he, the ball's going to be in his hands a lot. And he's 6'5", uh, strong. He can shoot the ball. He can drive it. He'll post it a little bit. Like he's all over the floor. And he's a little bit like Najee in a lot of ways. You know, I, just his versatility, you know, from watching him on film. Um, he's, he, he's, a, he's a really talented player. I guess he, you scored 46 against somebody last year. Yeah, he can score the ball. Hopefully it's not against Xavier, right? Um, we, we, got, we got to make things tough on him and, and make him earn his points. He's going to score because he's a good player, but we got we to gotta make him take a lot of shots to get his points. Thank you.